washers. Wash. Whoa, almost dropping it. Rah. Woo. Almost had our first crash and we haven't even left the garage. Hey guys, Richard here with eBike Reviews and Adventures. Well, look what showed up. I've got the Mock Wheel Obsidian here. Mock Wheel was kind enough to send this to me so I could unbox it, test it, review it, give you my thoughts on it. And good timing because I'm going to be doing a group ride here tomorrow with some friends. So I'm going to get this unboxed today, see if I can get it set up and ready to go uh, so that I can enjoy it tomorrow on this group ride. So uh, yeah, well, let's just get into the video. All right, guys, so if you've been on my channel a while, you know that I have previously owned Mock Wheel. I own the Mock Wheel Basalt. I purchased that one myself as my very first e-bike, and that's what kind of got this channel started. My second e-bike I ever purchased was the Mock Wheel Scoria, <clears throat> and I enjoyed both of those bikes very much. The quality of the bike is very good. They're just a lot of fun to ride. And uh, so now Mock Wheel reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to send you the Mock Wheel Obsidian, so you can test it out, check it out, and make some videos about it. So that's what I'm here to do. And I will tell you that uh, when I was talking to my contact at Mock Wheel, they told me that they're going through some changes right now. And they're changing a little bit about how they do things and how they are able to interact with customers. And they're trying to increase their level of customer support and customer service to, uh, to folks. So just be aware of that, that they're undergoing some changes right now. The company has only been in business for one year. So uh, they've experienced a lot of growing pains this past year, as companies often do. But uh, yeah, sounds like, sound like they're moving in a really good direction. And I'm excited to tear into this box, so let's do it. Wow, so I've never had an e-bike box that was this well put together. I mean, <laughs> I, can't, I can't bust this thing apart. They've got, you know, two staples, da 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 all over the place here, and it has really got this lid secured. This is kind of funny. So you're struggling with the box. There goes, there goes Jack, boy. There's too much noise for him. He doesn't like noise, and he will bolt out of here. All right. I should just cut this from the side and drag the bike out from the side. Well, it's almost as if they don't want you to get in to get to their pocket. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness, that was crazy. Let's slide this out a little bit. I have never... I've never had to use tools to bust into a box. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I'll tell you, this is a really thick box too. So good on Mock Wheel for that because um, a lot of bikes come in really really thin cardboard boxes and that's where you oftentimes have shipping damage and problems and the box is beat up and it's got holes in it this box i didn't show you this box didn't have any holes in it at all Look, yeah looks like there might be a a small puncture right down there but that's the shipper but this box is just extremely robust <laughs> Oh my, oh my goodness, that is the craziest unboxing I've ever done. And we're not even there yet. We just got the lid open. That is, that is just crazy. I don't know what to do here. Get razor blade. Oh my goodness, there we go. Since we're here, let's just go ahead and see what's in the box. Wow, glad I did that. Check this out. I have never seen a toolkit like this before. That's pretty cool. Got the wrenches, got Allen wrenches. Nice little Allen wrenches too because they're nice and they're nice and big. Okay, so not the lady bitty short ones. So great on you for that mock wheel. Size, presumably we'll need those. So 
We have a tail light. Eh, that's a bummer. But that's okay. That's a mountain style bike. Got some brackets here for something. Don't know what yet. Got uh, pedals, nothing in these dials. A few more screws and things. And there's a front headlight. All right, it's a three amp charger, so that's good. Okay, let's get in here and take a closer look at this bike here. So huge zip ties, secure and everything. I mean, it is it is in there tightly. We got an air pump attached to the, uh, the bike frame there, which is kind of interesting. And it, just a couple pieces of foam, so nothing too much to unpack here. All right, we've got a large uh, 26 by four. This is a Chow Yang with the Hippo skin, so that should really help it as far as puncture uh, resistance out on the trail. So I like that. We've got a lot of zip tie, that's for sure. You know, guys, I have to say, I like the color. This isn't a bright yellow. It's a, it's like a matte yellow. And it's not quite yellow, but it's not quite orange. I mean, it's kind of a strange color. But you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, a, as a kid, I had those Tonka trucks. You remember those metal Tonka trucks? And I used to play around in the dirt with. And I, I had a dump truck, a grader, and I think a bulldozer. And and spent my childhood summers playing in the dirt with those things. And they were bright yellow, similar to this right here. So that's kind of cool. Check out the check out the packaging up here on the on the stem that's or the that's protecting the stem head. Stem, what do you call that? The stem? And my handlebar holder. I mean that's a huge honking piece of foam just to protect that right there. So that's nice. A lot of packaging down here protecting the the, the forks. I haven't quite seen that before, but they've got the forks jammed down in this big foam piece that's molded around it, so that's kind of cool. All right, I am I am digging the color scheme. This black and yellow looks amazing, and I am digging it. I really am. I hope this bike performs every bit as what it looks, every bit as good as what it looks, because it is just, yeah, this is sharp. Oh, boy. Well, they've got all the screws conveniently packaged in these little uh, Ziploc bags. And they've got them labeled uh, M6 by 25. There's two of them in there. We've got some M6 by 14, M4 by 75. So they've got them labeled for you. But unfortunately, we're going to have to break out some instructions to figure out which screws go to where. So let's see if it tells us anything. Okay, guys, that's a little bit of a bummer. There's nothing in the instructions that tell us, you know, what screws we're supposed to use for for each of these components. So we're just going to have to figure it out here. <laughs> I have never, I have ne never, never had this much trouble getting into a bike. The, uh, I'm not sure what they're called. I do wish the washers, wash, whoa, almost dropping it. Rah, woo, almost had our first crash and we haven't even left the garage. I do wish the washers had those little tabs that uh, allow it to hook into the frame or in this case, hook into the forks. It just helps secure the front tire a little bit better because when you're out there bouncing around on the trails and stuff, you don't want anything to loosen up and then by, for any chance the tire to come off. So I, I always prefer to have the, uh, the washers that's got the little tab locks things in there for you okay guys I'm, in, I'm having a dilemma here and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do fenders or no fenders it looks really sharp without fenders in most mountain bikes you don't put fenders on right but we got a lot of rain around here just recently with a big storm that goes through I don't know if the trails are gonna be muddy at all and I'm, I'm thinking you know a fender is going to be helpful not to be slinging mud up there but i can't decide oh i just can't decide because i like the look without fencers f fencers Woo! without fenders because it just looks like a uh i mean it looks it looks a little tougher right you start adding fenders then you start getting that wimpy look let's look at the fenders yeah these are looks like these are going to be plastic fenders too so you know are they going to bounce around no fenders fender that's the question fenders and no fenders tell me down below fenders or no fenders when you're dealing with a mountain style e-bike like this 
because I need to make a decision here. I still need to add the light, the tail light, the pedals. I'm going to do that right now. But man, I really need to know what to do with these fenders. All right, I cleaned up most of my mess, and we're going to go ahead and put the pedals on now and the lights. And I still haven't made a decision about the fenders. But hey, guys, be careful when you're cleaning up your boxes with lots and lots of staples. Uh, be careful you don't slice your finger open like I did. Uh, yeah, it's trash day, so I had to take everything out to the road. And I grabbed the box, and wow, man, it just slit me wide open. All right, let's see here. Let's get these pedals on. Okay, guys, the, uh, the light they gave us, it's actually a pretty good quality compared to some of the other lights I've received that were kind of really kind of cheap, you know. Um, but this is good quality even though it's not an integrated light, and I wished it was. It is USB rechargeable, so that's kind of nice. So you can charge it there, on switches here, and you simply just unsnap it and put it around your seat post. What are we missing? We got the lights, we got the lights, we got that. We don't have the fenders. Got everything hooked up. I don't have keys. There's the keys. That's where they should be on the handlebars. I just didn't see them earlier. 20 amp hour battery. Actually, I think it's like 19.6 or something like that. Um, got a charging port right down here. You've got a place for the inverter right here. Didn't get the inverter. You see that? This is the, where the magic is right here. Look at this shock. Big Hyper DNM. Not familiar with it, but it has adjustments, which I like. So don't have any instructions with this. So I'm going to have to look this up online and get the instructions on how that you can um you know how we probably air it up i'm guessing or maybe it's just all hydraulic i don't know about how we make adjustments to it so i'll have to figure that part out looking down through here mock oil does not sell a rear rack and but but the frame is clearly designed for racks so it's kind of interesting that they probably used a, a frame that was already designed and built um yeah and it's, I mean, they got these nice inserts in the frame. So it's ready for a rack. They just don't sell racks. And it's my understanding that they don't intend to. So I might find an aftermarket rack because here's the thing. I do more road riding than I do trail riding. And when you get a bike like this, sometimes for some of you, you want it to be dual purpose. And you want to be able to take it just down the road, you know, riding around neighborhoods, quick trip to the grocery store. And you might want to be able to carry stuff. And I like to carry stuff because, you know, I have a saddlebag I carry with me everywhere. But not when I'm trail riding because when I'm trail riding, you know, you don't want extra stuff flopping around. So I understand that too. But, yeah. I'd like to be able to use this on the road as a regular, you know, as a regular riding bike. For me to do that, I will still probably have to raise the handlebar stem because I don't want that that aggressive stance leaning forward so I may make an adjustment there which could mean that tomorrow's ride if I take this on tomorrow's off-road ride group ride I may have trouble because that may give me a lot of trouble just constantly leaning forward on my elbows on my arms so I have to think about that suspension seat post I'll add that because I like my suspension seat post this does have a suspension seat Seat's pretty firm. We'll test it out for the review. But for my ride, uh, group ride, I may grab one of these other saddles that I like and stick on there. Yeah, just trying to take it all in and digest this a little bit. We got Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. And that looks like 100 and, yeah, at least 180 millimeter rotors. All right. Got to get this battery out, get it on charge. Want to take this bike for a ride really badly. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the unboxing video uh, because I'm not even, I'm not going to give you first impressions yet because I still got to you know got to get the battery charged up before I take it for the first ride and and uh, go over the nuts and bolts, make sure everything's tightened down. I want to get things ready for tomorrow because I want to try to take it tomorrow. So if I do, you get first impressions then. Uh, but overall, yeah, I'm really impressed with how it looks. Sharp, sharp looking bike. Good quality with everything that I've seen so far. They've got good components on here, which is pretty standard for Mach Wheel. They 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 do it right no weld joints I and mean, we got a little weld joint down here in the back uh, stay but now up here in the whole front half of the bike there's no weld joints everything's uh, 
ground off nice and smooth before it was painted. Just so much to like about this bike. I can't wait to get it out on the road and test ride it. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, you guys are just going to have to wait till the next video. All right, guys, I lied. I've got to get this thing out and take it for its first ride. This thing is just too sweet. I've already got it powered up. Sitting here looking at it thinking, yeah, we got to do this. So, leaning forward a little bit. Not leaning forward as much as I thought I was. Um, ooh, I tell you what, boy. Woo wee. You can ride this thing like a bull. Boy, this has got some suspension on it. It is. Might be a little too soft. May have to adjust that. All right, let's just do it. Let's just go for it. Well, I think I need my seat up a little taller, though. We'll get back to that. Torque sensor. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, wow. This is sweet. Super quiet. You hear the road noise because the tires are really aggressive, so they're really knobby. But even though they're really knobby, I think I've had other tires that were louder than this. Yeah, I'm not sure how much you're hearing. It's a real windy day again. So someone's been, a couple of people have been commenting on that. Like, hey, it's real windy out there. Yeah, sorry. Can't, can't control the wind. Try to get a windscreen for this camera. Typically, you don't need one. Oh, my goodness. You know, when you've been riding cadence sensors so long, it's kind of hard to get used to the fact that, you know, the bike's just not going to take off and go. And I'm sitting here expecting it to just ramp up and get gone. But it's not. See, I can put up in pedal assist 5 and I'm just barely putting effort and we're just barely moving along. But as soon as I start putting effort into it, oh yeah, we shoot off like a rocket. Hey, I was in fourth gear over there. Put that in 5, 6, that's 6 or 7, I can't quite tell. Maybe 6, 7. Holy smokes. 25, 26, 27. And look, I am keeping up with the pedals. No ghost pedaling. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's get turned around here. I got Toby outside. Let's downshift a little bit. Look at this. No ghost pedaling. 20. I'm only in seventh gear. I've got another gear to go. 25, starting to starting to pedal pretty fast. Let's put it in eight. Oh yeah. I could ride like this 27, 28 miles an hour. All day long. Woo! Holy smokes. Okay, I can't do this all day long in shorts when it's 50 degrees. I need some other clothing. I'm gonna have to go change clothes just so I can get this thing out. Oh man. Okay, so I, I've gotten excited before about a couple other bikes that just pedaled so nice. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be one of my favorites. No ghost pedaling at all at 27 miles an hour. And I've could've, I could have taken it further just trying to stay right here in front of the house. Drop back down a little bit. Oh, this is sweet. First impressions. That is sweet. That is sweet. That performs every bit as good as it looks. And I really like how it looks. Wow, 27 miles an hour. I was in eighth gear and I had plenty of pedal resistance to go. Part of that is, you know, it's a torque sensor, not a cadence sensor. 
So that really helps the ride. But oh my goodness, so smooth. So smooth. And those, those tires, as aggressive as what they are, I mean, they're more aggressive than some of the other ones that I've got. I was expecting it to be kind of noisy. It's, it's not. Motor's super quiet. It changed gears just uh, changed gears smoothly, no problems there. And this suspension, man, I got to figure this out. I got to figure out those adjustments. But it may not need any adjustments. And I'm 240, so you know when I sit on it, it squishes a little bit. So you got a couple inches of. Whoosh. So I won't really know for sure until I maybe take it on and off the curb, hit some bumps, and see if it. Uh, see if it's a little too soft but we'll make that adjustment but the fact that we can make the adjustment is what's important because so many bikes come with like you know a rear suspension and there's no adjustment no adjustability to it wow that is sweet that is sweet all right guys that's going to be it for this video toby and i we got to go eat some lunch and i got to learn about that shock make some adjustments maybe change my clothes <laughs> get back out there and ride this some more so you know, i'll be bringing you another video here real soon you guys take care